we are doing now a follow-up to our uh, bark inversion test. It is now December 16. Uh, the bark inver inversion took place on October 25th, so several weeks have gone by. Actually, a little longer than what I wanted it. I only wanted to leave this like four or five weeks. It's more like six, maybe more. Um, I trimmed the tree in the canopy here a little bit to keep it more compact for handling. Uh, I'll get you a close-up of this. Uh, strange things are happening here. Um, we have one big shoot going up in here between the girding, the double girding and the bark inversion. Now it seems like the, uh, the tree is responding. You have shoots below here, little ones coming up. You have one uh, shoot right at the uh, bark uh, girding, um, right in between. And you have two nice uh, big shoots coming between just below the uh, bark inversion. Now, I have no documentation on how to do this or how to follow it up, but I would imagine that you want growth from here up. Uh, again, this is total experimental. Uh, I'm going to now what we're going to do today also is we're going to remove the plastic, uh, the part above and below. Uh, where the bark inversion, inversion took place seems to be getting very big and thick. Okay, let's see. At this point, might as well remove this because I won't, don't want anything growing below the bark inversion. Totally fuse, totally fuse, uh, totally fuse. Let's see if I could turn it around a bit. Totally fuse. Incredible what's happening here. This was straight. This has gotten very thick in there. Huh. You see some uh, shoots growing in here. Those are the ones we want to try to keep uh, to see if this bark inversion does anything at all. This came out pretty good. The bark, it's green, obviously connected. We'll continue with the experiment.